Hey, check it out. We've got the router right here. Actually, let's let's check it out. It's cool. Let's get closer. So right here is the power button down there. Okay. So we fire it up. And it's going to turn that on right there. It's going to start spinning. Right. So that's spinning super fast. It's got a blade on it. That's an end mill. It's going to make like kind of square cuts. Here's a different router bit right there. That one's going to do a 3 8 cut. We'll see a couple of these. That's a roundover right there. And then right there is another roundover. That one's got the bearing on it, though, you can see on top. It's going to spin on there. A couple of adjustments we can do on that. So we can loosen these right here and this. And then that allows us to move the whole fence backwards or forwards, right? And so this one is set up so that we're going to cut that uh, router bit. can't get focus on it. We're going to use that router bit right there, but... Uh, that's the gap in between. So it's going to be a little bit from the bottom. So we'll see that in a minute. Over here, we can adjust the height of the blade. So that'll determine like how deep of a cut are we going to make on that thing. And so we've got our hand wheel down here. And that's about it. Uh, we're going to check this out. This is a miter slot right here. And we can use a miter gauge. Throw that baby in there. And then we can utilize that for helping out with angled cuts we got uh, different settings we can get on that so that is the tool itself all right now let's use it once let's see how this thing goes i'm going to fire it up get my push stick out of the way we're going to put a little groove in the bottom of this thing pressure against the fence my hand behind it. I don't want to follow it. I got my plate guard in place here. Let's just go. Nice and slow. You can only go as fast as the blade will let you. Push too hard, you're just going to break that blade off. So you're at a good pace right now. And then I'm going to get my push stick right here. So I can push from behind. And you know where the router bit is. I don't want this to hit the router or the bit. So I'm going to go ahead and keep it away from that hit. Keep the pressure in, put pressure down. And let's go ahead and run it again. So we'll get this groove on. And I don't, I'm not going to use this this time. So that's the best thing. Kind of pressure. Okay. There we go. So let's take a look at it. How would we do on that groove right there? Okay. Yep, there it is. A lot of beans. So we just put a groove all the way down that thing. All right then. So our router operation, you saw we turn it on, start spinning. When I had my board, I had pressure a couple directions. We're pushing against the fits to keep it there. The router bit itself is going to try and keep the bit there. It's spinning this way. And so when the router bit catches on the material, it's naturally going to pull it towards the fence. Okay. So something that scares beginners is they didn't have a board against the fence and then they touch the router bit and it just yanks the board. Okay. And it pops it against the fence. So it pulls it away from. Them. So make sure as we're getting that first cut in, we're against the fence, right? And we're getting that pressure in. So on this router bit in particular, we want to get that the same depth all the way across. So it's good to have uh, some nice pressure downwards, right? And I ran it that second time. Sometimes that's just clean it up. Maybe I didn't get all the way on depth. Sometimes we'll, like, I do a dado so another board will fit in there. And usually I bring the board that I'm going to put in and see how does it fit. Okay. So we'll, we'll go that way. But uh, there's another thing we can use to help us keep the board down on the table if you need to. This will be sitting over here. But we can just take one of these, find one of our clamps. Our clamps, that's a quick release. And that's going to tighten on our quick grips. And then we got our feather board, this is called. And we can clamp this down into place. I like to get the handle on the back side as I do this as well. So we'll get that down into place. We'll clamp it nice and good. And then we have one last thing to think about as we're going. So that will help us, that feather board, it is designed so that those um, bend back a little bit as we're going. And so it's putting a little bit of pressure keeping that down. If you need to, you could clamp down both sides if you needed that kind of support. And then we can just focus on making sure we get the board through. It will be a little bit harder to go forward and it is actually harder to go back because that spring 
is pushing down and it's going to bite into the board a little bit. So these feather beds boards are nice to help keep stuff down on the table. <coughs> you, I, the pace that I went was pretty slow. It wasn't that big of a cut, but we have to go to the pace that the router bit is going to uh, let us. You do not push too hard. It's about a patience game. If it can't remove the material fast enough, you're just going to be bending that bit and you'll just snap it right off. You are strong enough to do that. So please don't um, push too hard for no reason. We're not going to really. Uh, I had my push sticks accessible. They are close by, ready to go. So as I uh, get to the cut where I need it, so I started without my push sticks and then I got to this point and I was like, all right, I don't want my hand to get in there. This blade guard's going to be start getting in my way. I got to get underneath it. We're going to use a push stick. Body position wise, it's okay to start back here, but you know, you probably need to move out and then move across and move with the board. Okay. Go with the board. Don't just leave it and uh, leave your body hanging here all the time. If you're doing something like this and we just finish right here, that's just fine. Okay. We don't have to come all the way into this space. So uh, keep, uh, know that you are not stagnant. You don't have to stay here. When we feed boards in, we want to make sure and follow the arrows. All right, so um, we've got our blade spinning this way. Again, it's going to pull it against here. If we go the opposite direction, if we fed the board the wrong way, it would be spinning this way, and then it would catch, and it's going to grab the board and push it away from the fence. Okay, so if we are on this side, it's going to pull against the fence. If we come onto this side, it's going to push away from the fence. It'll be harder to run, won't be as safe. It's not going to make a good cut. So make sure that we're going here. Uh, on the test, it says uh, keep good pressure against the fence. Sometimes, like on this setup over here, we've got a bearing. So we've got the bearing on there. And what we need to do is make sure that our board is rolling against that. That will make sure that we got the full depth of the cut. So um, we'll take a look at that cut real quick. I'll jump over on this other saw or router. Clear my stuff out of the way. Let's grab this board. I ran that one twice just that I didn't get all the way down it was a little bit uh, lighter on this side and so I need to double check and go through it again so uh, that was a rabbiting bit so I uh, got a rabbit out here we got a dado right here so two different cuts that we can make on this router pretty easily and this is a shaper I keep calling it a router it just spins in here this is an actual router it's uh, the same kind of setup. Sometimes these are mounted in tables and they can just be used the same way if you get a fence on and stuff. So this is a hand tool. And so we can put the same type of bits. This one's got a round over, so we're gonna be rounding stuff out. And uh, we could run it around on the edges of something like a piece of wood. And this is usually when it's a bigger project and we need to get the whole table or something rounded on the top. And so we would use a router in that situation. As far as the safety test goes, see if I forgot anything. Wood shaper is a type of router. True, that is. Wood shapers are typically used to cut straight lines. We did cut a straight line, but we're not cutting all the way through it. I would say that's not necessarily true. Straight lines are easier cut on a chop saw against the grain, on the table saw with the grain. And so we do it somewhere else. The depth of cut on a shaper can be changed. Yeah, we're talking about that. This front wheel, we set the depth of the cut so we can uh, get a little bit different if we need. Wood shapers can be used with a push stick. Yes, I've always got a couple sitting right here. If you feel comfortable with one, you can do that. Keep the pressure with the other hand, or you can use two of them at a time. Keep your hands all the way out of the situation. Wood shapers should always be used with a feather bar. That's false. You don't have to. 
They're kind of helpful though if you've got longer sticks and you need to keep some pressure maybe on the back side because you're pushing over here, but you want to make sure it stays on the table. And so you set those up with some clamps beforehand. Boards should be fed left to right. False. They need to be fed from the right side to the left side. We're going to be moving into the blade so that it doesn't pull off of the fence as we're cutting. Um, that's it on that. Routers are good at making dados. Yes, that is true. We've got a great dado right there, and we did a quarter inch dado on it. I can use the shaper without the blade guard. False. This is a blade guard. We're always going to have that in position. If we have a thicker board, maybe we need to adjust the height on it, and so we can just loosen the keys and drop or lower the keys, whatever we're going to do to get in a good, safe position. we be able to get that board underneath there. Our hands, it's best if our hands can get on top of the board and into the router. Uh, router is a handheld tool that is very similar to a wood shaper. True. Yes. Miter gauges are something helpful on the router. Yes. We sometimes can use miter gauge with slots that can help us uh, keep boards flush. On the end of this thing, it would be moving around. It's the short edge against the fence, not so helpful. And so a miter gauge would be good to help me get a good grip and hold on it and hold it in position. When making a data on the router, you should only run one or your board at one time. False. Each time I made both of these, I, I ran it once there and I ran it again just to clean up anything. I ran it once on the rabbiting bit and then I ran it again to clean it up. So it's very difficult to get it correct the first time. I usually run those twice. Um, and firm pressure should be in which directions? I should push against the fence or the bearing, right? Uh, there's a bearing over on that one. Or, and actually down uh, towards the table. So we've got to get good pressure towards the fence and towards the table. And that is almost it. Round overs, end, and V are all types of bits. So uh, we talked about router bits, that this is a uh, rabbiting bit. Okay. And then it talks about the size three eighths. So that's from the blade to the bearing is three eighths. And then we can adjust the height if we want a deeper cut or not. This is a round over bit. Uh, v bits are something we're going to be using on the CNC over there. And we'll take a look at those later. Before running my board through the shipper, what four things should you check? Uh, number one, your push sticks are accessible. Make sure that they're close by so that if we need to get them, we're good to go. Uh, what the cut looks like by practicing on a piece of wood. And I put that one on here, so um, we grab the board off the wall, we cut it on a chop saw, we took it to the table saw probably and ripped it, maybe we took it to the thickness plater. So we've already done three things to it, and we've already put, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes into this board. We don't want to come up here and then not have our setup correct and ruin it. So it's a good idea. Test on scrap wood often as soon as uh, you make a new setup or you haven't done something before practice. You find something in the back, Test on it, and then we go from there. The distance of the bit compared to the fence or bearing. So, you know, we want to make sure that our distance is set up correctly. Um, and we got a certain setup over there. And then the height of the router bit. So we want to know about height of the router bit, the distance from the fence, uh, whether our push sticks are accessible, and then we will probably want to practice on a piece of scrap wood before we get onto our product. 